I'm very honored to be the speaker today. It was really exciting to be asked to do this. It was sheer panic when I tried to figure out what I needed to say or what I wanted to say. So I started by reflecting on my own commencement and all the diploma ceremonies for the department. And to be honest, I can't remember a single speech and I can't even tell you who any of the speakers were. But I can remember how special all those commencements felt. Um, each ritual was special and I think it was because of the graduates. It was special to the graduate. So graduates, today this is all about you. Today's ceremony affirms your accomplishments, your academic accomplishments, and your leadership accomplishments. I want you to sit back and remember what you love most about this place and what you're going to miss. Some of your feelings are already changing, changing as I'm giving this talk. Hate's shifting a little bit to love. That course from hell is now a different memory. Now it's the memory of the friendships you forged trying to survive the course. Years from now, you aren't going to remember the details of that course, but you're going to remember the all-nighters, those food truck meals, and those crazy friends that survived with you. Being here right now affirms the community you created. The ceremony is also the commencement of your future, and I've been charged with providing inspiration and a little encouragement. So I'm going to tell you some stories, some stories of my life, and yeah, I stuck some messages in there. Many of you are headed to your first professional job, or you wish you were. So I'm going to tell you about how I got my jobs. I was lucky. I only worked for three employers in my 40 plus years in my career. But that means you're lucky because you only have to listen to three stories. Story number one, live your dream. My first job was at Bell Telephone Laboratories in New Jersey. It was a heady time. Unix and C were being invented just down the road at the Murray Hill Lab. My department was inventing a cache memory computer. I was having great fun working on compilers, linkers, and software. And how did I find this dream job? Well, the labs recruited me at my university in much the same way that you may have found your job. That first job found me. But we could say that I found the job because I found my way to the university and you found your way to NC State. And how did all that happen? How did I find my way? I was born in a small town, a thousand people in eastern Kentucky, and that's where I was raised. Neither of my parents even attended high school. But my brother-in-law, Joe, he went to UK, and that was all it took for me to see that it could be done. Over the years, I've asked a lot of my students what brought them to state. Most responded with something like, my dad went there, or my mom works at state, or some other family or friend connection. So a connection was made and those students came to state, and you came. Now, because of you, someone else will feel connected and they'll come. You need to remember that, and you need to make it happen. Wear those red state shirts proudly. Tell kids, especially kids, including your own kids, about what it was like to be a student here. Tell them what computer science is about. Brag a little bit. Brag a lot. And you'll be letting them know that because you did it, they can do it. Well, story number two. Job number two, dreams change. After eight years at Bell Labs and I turned 30, my dreams changed. I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina to be with David Smith, who's been my husband for 32 years. I met Dave when he was at the labs on a rotational assignment from Bell South. I moved south to be with the person I wanted and be where I wanted to be. I just did it, boldly. Great decision, but it didn't work out at first the way I'd anticipated. My first days, actually my first months in Wilmington were awful. It was humbling and downright depressing to be unemployed. I was only able to find two job openings that involved computers. One was a sales job with National Care Register, didn't get an offer, and a one job was in Jacksonville. That a hospital was planning on getting a computer to manage their payroll. Now that would have been a 50 mile commute each day. Ugh. So picture this, I'm in Wilmington, I'm in this small dark apartment with David. We weren't married, there weren't a lot of folks happy about that. I had no friends, no money, no job. 
I was trying desperately to pinch pennies. So one evening Dave got home and I had cooked dinner. And I had cooked a meal that was cheap. And it had a very interesting look. We had stewed chicken, dumplings, and mashed potatoes. An all-white meal. David quietly got up and went to the refrigerator and took out a jar of pickles and added some to the plate to separate all the foods. That meal was a turning point. I decided I had to find something to do. It was the late 70s and equal rights for women was my cause. So I just went out to the community and I joined everything in the community that was associated with that cause. I didn't know anyone, but I became part of the community because I volunteered and I volunteered for doing what no one else wanted to do. I became the fundraiser. I organized wine and cheese tastings, garage sales, I held auctions, whatever. I called the paper and the TV station to publicize whatever we were doing and I had a blast. I learned all sorts of new skills. I met all sorts of new people. It was a real wild experience and I got a job. One of the women I met was Renee. Renee knew Lynn and Len worked at GE, and he needed a computer person. Uh, did I mention that I'd given my resume to everybody I had met? So it was handy when Renee just handed Len my resume. Len was a manager at General Electric Nuclear Fuels. He hired me, and I worked my way up to senior digital systems engineer. With others, I designed and built real-time systems for quality control inspections of nuclear fuel and um, reactor parts. That job lasted nearly a decade. So the volunteer work got me a connection to a job, a good job. But being without a real job taught me a lot. It changed my attitude toward work. Leaving college, I felt I had to find a job I loved. I had to do the work I loved. Now, I love the job I found. I did anything and everything that needed to be done on that job. If a report needed writing, I wrote it. Someone's code didn't work, I helped them. It's amazing what you can learn by reading someone else's buggy code. And I enjoyed it, enjoyed everything it took to get the project done. So there's something to love in every job, you just need to find it. And if you can't find that real job, the one with the money attached, find some other job, find some work, find a new interest. Go operate the lights or the soundboard for the local theater group. Find a cause. Make calls for your favorite politician. Do it. Listen to what people at the other end of the call have to say. But whatever you do, learn from it. If you need money, find any job and learn from it. If you sell plants at Lowe's, figure out what killer app would make that business better and do it. I know how good you are. You're a state graduate. And I know you've learned how to learn. So download that development kit and get going. Story number three. Make things up as you go along. Oops, time to get back to the last story. So time went on in Wilmington. David and I got married. We bought a house. We had a son. We bought a BMW. Actually, we bought two BMWs. And then there was an economic downturn. Yep, one of those great recessions came along. Mortgage rates were 20%. Jobs were lost. Life sucked. David was still working for Bell South and they transferred him to Raleigh. Our TP looked pretty promising, so we decided we would move up to Raleigh. <clears throat> but I never worked in our TP. Um, no, one August day, I just naively called the department head of computer science at NC State. I Googled him. But back then, Googling means that I looked up his number in a phone book. And uh, Dr. Martin answered the phone. I introduced myself and I asked if he needed anyone to teach some classes. He asked me what I could teach and I said, well, I thought I could do a good job on operating systems and he needed someone from CSC 246. Now what was so fortuitous about this call was the timing. I called at lunchtime. Departmental secretary, who was notorious for fielding all calls, was at lunch and the call zipped right through to the department head. Dr. Martin hired me, it was temporary, part-time, no benefits, very little salary. I thought I'd teach a few courses and then I'd return to industry. But I loved teaching and I loved working with UNC State students. And 22 years later, I'm still teaching. 
So you might think the message in this story was a little, hmm, a little luck can really help. And it sure can. But what was my intended insight from this story? Well, 40 years ago, did I have a grand plan to go work in R&D for all those years and then become a college lecturer for nearly a quarter of a century? Nope. It just happened. And there were some dark times mixed in. But when I was sitting where you're sitting now, I assumed that my first job would be my entire career. I believed everyone had planned their path through life and that everyone was confident in that path. And that's not true. Now I know we have no idea what's going to happen next and we're mostly just making things up as we go along. The dreams change, the economy for sure changes, technology changes, and it's okay. Our direction in life changes. Doesn't mean we're failures, not one bit. Just know that it's going to happen and embrace it. Wisdom will come, but it'll happen when you're doing something else. So I want you to take care of yourself. Don't drink and drive. I want you to eat lots of vegetables. Meditate. Exercise. This is going to improve your odds of getting old and being very wise. And I want you to count on a very long and happy life with lots of twists and turns ahead. You're going to have a great life and my congratulations to you. So let's end with this little special mantra for you. Hello world, here I come. <laughs>